Hey, Mom, can you grab me a beer, please? Mom, are you deaf? Oh, so now you can hear me. I asked you to bring me a beer. This is how it always is when my son and his wife talk to me. We've been living together for five years, and they've never really listened to me. They usually ignore me or just boss me around like I'm their maid. My daughter-in-law, Shan, talks badly about me to everyone, and my son, Paul, treats me like I'm just here to clean up after them. I decide to ignore them and pretend to watch TV, acting like I can't hear them. I'm fed up with them only paying attention when they want something and ignoring me the rest of the time. After a while of ignoring them, Shen grabs the remote and turns off the show I was watching. I'm surprised when she says loudly right next to my ear, Hey, mother-in-law, can you hear me? Make sure you make Paul's lunch tomorrow, okay? Her voice was so loud it made my ears ring and I couldn't help but grimace. Seeing my reaction, my daughter-in-law laughed and left the living room with my son. I couldn't help but wonder why she couldn't be a bit more considerate, especially since I'm her husband's mother and she relies on me every day. Judging from my son's behavior, it seemed like I was just a maid to her. There was no apology from either of them, and I didn't feel like they cared about how I felt. Frustrated, I sent an email to my husband and decided to leave the house. My name is Karen, and I'll be turning 72 this year. Five years ago, my son and his wife asked if they could move in with me because they were worried about the future and wanted to save money. Since then, we've been living together as two families in one house. If you live with us, Mom, you'll feel safer, right? Maybe you're right. My husband is a workaholic. He started his own company when he was young and still works hard even at 73. Our house felt quiet after our son moved out. When I talked to my husband about our son and his wife moving in with us, he just said, do whatever you like. So with not much discussion and feeling a bit bored, I agreed hoping life would get livelier when they moved in. My son's wife, Jan, and I split the housework, but as she said her part-time job got busier, I ended up doing more and more. She helps if I ask, but usually she's reluctant or busy with her own stuff, so I stopped asking for her help and did everything myself, feeling unappreciated. Even at meal times with the whole family, there's hardly any conversation. I guess I got used to it, like with my husband. One day, while I was making dinner for three as usual, I got a message from my husband saying, I'll be late for work, don't need dinner. This wasn't unusual, but the problem was with my son and his wife. Dad's going to be late, huh? Yeah, I'm not hungry either. Oh, I'm going out with a friend, so I don't need dinner. Why are you telling me this? I've already made it. I said it's okay. Just save it for tomorrow. Even though it was dinner time, they were about to leave without a word. If I didn't say anything, they could have told me earlier if they didn't need dinner. It seemed like they'd never think to consider me first. I couldn't help but feel frustrated at their rudeness, but they left without any apology. What am I working so hard for? I sat in a quiet living room looking at the dinner I'd already prepared, not wanting to waste it. What am I even doing? Just thinking about it made me feel so tired. I wrapped up the still warm dinner and put it in the fridge before heading to bed. The next morning when I came downstairs, my husband, who had woken up earlier, apologized, saying, I'm sorry. Our conversation was short as usual. It could have ended there, but when my husband noticed my expression, he furrowed his brows slightly and asked, did Paul and his wife have dinner? No, they said they didn't eat and went out, I replied. I see, my husband said, noticing the dinner for three in the fridge. I was glad to finally have a conversation after so long, so I told him what happened last night. My usually quiet husband listened carefully. After hearing me out, he gently said, you don't have to do everything. He acknowledged that our son's behavior was becoming worse every day, but that didn't mean I should overwork myself. His words felt like a weight lifting off my shoulders. 
I realized I had been pushing myself too hard and felt relieved that my husband understood. My son and his wife were grown-ups now, so I didn't need to do everything for them. With that realization, the situation seemed a bit brighter. I might be late from work again, so you don't need to prepare dinner for me tonight, my husband said. Oh, okay, I replied with a smile. With his words in mind, I decided it was time for my son and his wife to understand this too. Even though it was Sunday, I said goodbye to my husband and made up my mind to stand up to my son and his wife. Once my husband left, my son and his wife finally woke up in the afternoon. Still in their pajamas, they came into the living room and immediately asked, What's for lunch? Why don't you have what's left from yesterday? But you could at least warm it up for us or set it on the table. You're not small, children. You can do it yourself, I replied. Well, mother-in-law, you are getting old, aren't you? Shane, my daughter-in-law, joked with a laugh, and Paul, my son, joined in, looking at me. I'm exhausted because Jane hasn't been helping with the housework at all, I said. Oh, can't you manage without me? Is it your menopause or something? Shen retorted, laughing. Their attitudes made me sigh. They went back to their room without cleaning up after eating, seeming unbothered. As expected, my husband didn't return until late that night. Since I didn't need to cook for him, I bought myself a ready-made meal from the supermarket. Oh, Mom, what are you eating? Ready-made food. What about dinner? Paul asked. I don't know, mother-in-law, what are you thinking? Have you forgotten about your family? She added. I wondered if Jane was incapable of having a conversation without throwing in some bark. I decided to ignore my daughter-in-law, which seemed to quiet Paul down. However, he quickly picked up his phone and started complaining again. You don't work, Mom. You should at least take care of the house. I thought that since it was their day off, they could prepare their own meals for once, but instead, they decided to order delivery. Give us the money later, Paul said, which made me lose my patience, especially since they were always talking about saving money. I agreed not to ask them for money to cover our living expenses, and I never bothered them about it but I never expected them to take advantage of me like this. I decided to completely ignore them, refusing to do anything for my son and daughter-in-law who showed such disrespect. Hey, mom, beer, Paul demanded while Jane kept making snide remarks. Paul talked to me like I was their housemate. Ignoring them, I turned my back and pretended to watch TV, acting like I couldn't hear them. After a while of ignoring them, it seemed like she gave up and stopped talking to me. But this peace didn't last long. Before I knew it, my daughter-in-law snuck up behind me, grabbed the TV remote, and turned off the TV. Startled, I looked up only for her to shout into my ear, Hey, mother-in-law, can you hear me? Make sure to prepare lunch for Paul tomorrow, okay? Her voice was so loud it hurt my ears, making me flinch. Laughing at my reaction, my daughter-in-law left the living room with Paul. I couldn't help but wonder why she couldn't show a bit of courtesy, especially considering that I'm her husband's mother and she relies on me regularly. But judging from Paul's attitude, it seemed like I was nothing more than a maid to her. As it turned out, there was no sign of consideration for me at all and I didn't even hear an apology for last night's dinner from either of them. Letting out a deep sigh, I sent a text to my husband and made up my mind to leave the house early the next morning. I packed my things and left before they woke up. When I arrived at a nearby business hotel, my phone buzzed with texts from Paul, who had just woken up before heading to work. Apparently, they were in quite a chaos this morning. Texts and calls from both of them flooded my phone. When I checked the messages, all I saw were complaints like, What are you doing? I told you I need lunch. Shan also sent a mocking text, Are you wandering around forgetting your responsibilities? It seemed they were struggling just because I hadn't prepared breakfast for them, which made me chuckle a bit. Seeing a call from Paul during his lunch break, 
I decided it was time to talk to him. You finally picked up, Mom. Where the hell are you and what are you doing? Paul's voice sounded impatient. It's none of your business, is it? You didn't even prepare our food. Where are you? Paul, you're not a child. You can make your own food, can't you? I responded, feeling irritated. If he had struggled so much to prepare just one meal, he should have shown some appreciation. But to my surprise, he said something unexpected. I'm paying for living expenses, so I need you to do the housework. Living expenses? What are you talking about? I never received such a thing, I said, puzzled. Why not? Shane should have been giving it to you every month, so don't lie, Paul insisted, claiming he was paying me living expenses. Despite my truthful denial, Paul started calling me a liar. The truth is my husband covers all their living expenses, including their food. Even after explaining this repeatedly, Paul refused to believe me. I could hear Jane in the background saying, you're probably just playing dumb and spending it for yourself. Figure it out yourselves by now. I hung up the phone and let out another big sigh. Why do they believe they're not in the wrong even after all this? I didn't understand what Paul was talking about earlier when he mentioned our living expenses. About a week after I left the house, the situation improved. My husband, who had come to check on me, apparently talked to Paul and Jen. Their texts suddenly became more respectful and submissive. Wondering what had happened, I received a text from my husband. Paul and Jen want to apologize. If you feel like it, please come home. Thanks to my husband's talk, they finally seemed to understand. I replied to my husband's text, made preparations, and decided to go home that day. When I returned, Paul and Jen were waiting at the entrance, their faces pale and worn out. It seemed they were quite upset by the lecture from my husband. I decided to hear the story about this past week from them and my husband about the living expenses I mentioned on the phone. I said I didn't receive them, right? You said you wanted to save money, so I didn't say anything. Actually, Dad was really mad at us about that, Paul explained. It seemed my son had missled his father about his contribution to the household expenses, believing I had been lying and portraying me as the villain. However, when my husband explained the reality of my busy schedule and showed him our household book, Paul quieted down. You couldn't even believe me, but Jane kept saying that she was giving you the money. So what happened to your living expenses? I asked, feeling betrayed from my son's perspective. He was definitely paying, so he must have been baffled, but the money wasn't reaching me. It seemed my husband then confronted Jane and made her confess. At first, Jane pretended ignorance, but when my husband confronted her, she finally confessed everything. I'm appalled. She was accusing me of squandering money on the phone, but it turns out she was just talking about herself, I said, feeling betrayed. But living with my in-laws can be stifling, and everyone was inviting me, so I just, just because of that, you thought it was okay to embezzle our living expenses. You made me look like a fool, too, Paul interjected, his voice full of frustration. What? You're acting all high and mighty, too," Shan retorted defensively. At that point, when the two of them began to stray from the topic and argue, my husband cleared his throat loudly. Startled by his sudden interruption, Paul and Jane fell silent immediately, seemingly terrified of my husband's disapproval. I couldn't help but chuckle at their reaction, like children caught misbehaving. Excuses, excuses! Cut the crap. First, you should sincerely apologize to your mom, my husband said firmly. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the two of them finally bowed their heads to me. But Paul still tried to justify himself, saying he had been taking it easy because it was his home. I've been busy at work, and I just wanted to relax at home, he added. So what about your mother, who was being taken for granted and mocked by her big son and his wife, even in her own home. My husband's words cut through my son's excuses, leaving him speechless. I'm appalled at my son, who despite his age, 
still relies on his parents and Jeanne, who took advantage of that to embezzle money, my husband continued, his tone firm. Mom, I'm sorry. You see, I'm apologizing to you, Paul said, trying to make amends. Do you think an apology makes everything okay? Please reflect on yourself a bit. I responded firmly. The two of them thought that bowing their heads to me would resolve everything smoothly, and they were flustered by my words as they tried to make excuses. But I could see through their scheme, and I shook my head. Whether you contribute to the living expenses or not, I can't overlook that attitude. You have to learn to be more grateful, I said firmly. But aren't you worried about your future too, mother-in-law? Paul interjected. Yes, I'm full of worries about relying on people like you. How can you talk to us like that? I retorted. You splurge our living expense out of stress from living with us. Shan added defensively. I can't have someone like you stay with us any longer, I stated firmly, silencing them with my resolve. They needed to learn once again how rude their actions were while living together as a couple. Later, we managed to have them move out in the days that followed. Jane, my son's wife, started to come to our house occasionally to learn household chores from me. She continually vented about how my son Paul did not lift a finger to help with any housework, as she had always been showing off to her colleagues. I assume she couldn't complain to anyone else. Now I understand just how much I relied on you, Karen, she admitted. Indeed. And yet you have the audacity to accuse me of being deaf and squandering money, I remarked, feeling vindicated. Unable to live with us anymore and facing financial constraints due to her misuse of funds, Chan fervently complained about her now austere life. However, as I listened, I couldn't help but feel that she was simply facing the consequences of her actions. As for Paul, he started to bring home delicious snacks as gifts from time to time, seemingly trying to make up for his previous lack of consideration. Although he still mentioned his past behavior occasionally, I appreciated his efforts. I knew he wasn't the most expressive or communicative person, but his gestures were touching nonetheless. During our discussions with Paul and Jen, my husband expressed his gratitude, saying, Thanks for your hard work, honey. I appreciate it. I'm glad that I can talk to my husband like this again, I reflected, feeling grateful for the calmness that had returned to our lives despite the challenges we faced. I found myself leading a life that was calmer and happier than before.